today to follow up on our last video about uh, radiators and the next step in our process are fans uh, in my opinion and the radiator video went over great I think a lot of people learn from it I'm still learning but I like to share everything I know with you so today we're gonna talk about fans because a uh, good radiator only is as good as the fans that are putting air to it and um, as you know, a lot of cars these days don't have a huge grill opening like cars of the past uh, from the 60s and 70s where it was all wide open. So one of our challenges uh, most times is getting enough airflow to let the radiator do its job. And it's often overlooked and there's a few key things that I've learned uh, that have worked really well for us that have improved how well our cooling system works. And to be honest with you, um, Without a good fan setup, you can almost expect your cooling system to not work very well. Um, there's a ton of options on the market. I'm not brand biased. Uh, we don't need really to be honest. Uh, on our projects that we build, uh, both for street and strip, we usually um, look at a variety of options before we come to our final uh, fan setup for whatever project we're doing. There's some uh, projects where depth just simply isn't there, so we have to kind of get creative. Um, we use fans from Flexlite, Spall, uh, Durali makes a really nice setup, and we'll get into that more here in a second. So it's hot as hell here today, so I feel like this would be the perfect day to talk about this because for the next two, three months, uh, this is gonna be on everybody's mind. When you are driving your car in the street or you're at the track, you wanna be able to cool it down both at stoplights and in between uh, passes. So here, one of the first things I see people do if they haven't built a car before or uh, they're not sure what they need to do is they'll just get two uh, fans and just use those little radiator zip ties and zip tie them right to the radiator. And that works sometimes, but most of the time it's not very effective or you could be more effective with the proper shrouding. Uh, the reason why we like to use the Raleigh brand fans and uh, Flexlite is they both have uh, some unique options for shrouding. Uh, the fans are already built into the shroud and I believe most of these companies are using a Spall fan. So Spall, if you're not familiar, uh, makes a great fan. Uh, it's made in the U.S. I think actually right here in Iowa actually. But these fans incorporate, or these companies incorporate these fans into shrouds that work on standard radiators. So. When we pick out a radiator, we always try to pick out fans at the same time. You know, if you get too short of a radiator, you can't fit a nice dual fan set up on it or even a big single fan set up on it. It'll move enough CF CFM to cool your system. So um, when I'm building a project like Hank here, the C10, what I will do is I will measure what'll fit, then I will look at radiators, and before I make a decision on a radiator, I need to make sure I have a fan set up that's gonna move 3,500 to 4,000 CFM through that radiator. My target um, when I'm building a vehicle like this, uh, whether it's a Coyote or an LS or an LT, small block Chevy, big block Chevy, if it's a street car, I like to see anywhere between like 34 to 4,000 CFM moving through the radiator. Uh, why that's important is I've seen some people and they'll come to me with uh, overheating trouble and They'll say, but I have two fans, and I'm like, okay, what do those fans move for CFM? And they don't know, because they think two fans, all they're all created equal. Well, you look them up, and they're 800 a piece, so you're moving 1,600 CFM. And if that's on something like an F-body, where there's almost zero uh, air coming through the front of the car, it's just not going to work. Um, I know we talked about front shrouding before, but that is only gonna work so well. And that's why these cars come with electric fans from the factory. So, um, important thing to know is the CFM. Now, of course, if you have a 16 volt system, it's gonna work much better than a 12 volt system. Uh, just like any electric motor, the higher the voltage, the better it's gonna work, and the more the motor is gonna work. So that's something to keep in mind as well, but most people aren't running 16 volt systems on street car, not most anyways. As far as a drag race application, um, if you have a small fan or a small radiator, just make sure you get as much uh, fan as you can. There's only so much you can do for that stuff, but like I said before, electric fans aren't all created equal. So whatever you do, make sure you try and max out what you can. And my rule of thumb for a streetcar is 3,500 to 4,000 CFM. 
Um, and that's something that needs to be determined before you build the setup, not after. Because you might be disappointed if you get done building and you can't find a fan setup that fits on your little radiator. Now, back to shrouding. So, to just stick these fans on a radiator, um, your contact patch is really small. So, if I put these things right up against the radiator, the air is going to move through those circular sections, but nowhere else. So one of the reasons why shrouding is important is because it backs the fans off the radiator far enough to kind of create a whole push through the, as much radiator as possible. Basically that air spreads out after it gets past the fan and you get a great uh, bigger contact patch. And that seems to work really well and be more effective and that's the reason why people are shrouding stuff. Now that creates a little bit of an issue space wise so, like I said before, the reason I try to make videos like this, especially this one, is that you see this ahead of time. Uh, you build your setup around this because what fun is a car or a race car that can't be cooled off, whether it's on the street or between rounds. Uh, it's a lot more enjoyable when that's the last thing that's on your mind and the first thing that's on your mind is enjoyment or racing your car. So as you can see, Hank here has um, a Durale brand dual fan setup. Um, this has a nice shroud. The nice thing is these things are designed and engineered to work properly. And again, I don't have problems overheating the projects I build because I follow these principles. That's not arrogant, that's just, I've trialed and errored it because I did fail back in the beginning. This thing has a nice blow through, um, so when air comes from the front, it, gets, it doesn't get trapped in there. These fan setups that I've found all work best as polar setups like this, which means that the air is, it's pulling the air this way through the radiator. Um, basically working with the air that would come in through the grill. Now, we have the same, almost the same setup on the Nova. And this one was a pain because we didn't have a whole lot of room on the front of this car when we built it. And I really had to sacrifice a little bit to get the fan package and radiator package that I wanted wanted and you'll find this on most muscle cars a lot of them um, have a real short distance between the front and where the intake goes which makes intake piping a little bit difficult but i can tell you this car goes down the road 160 degrees and it's the best thing ever because cooling is always the last thing on my mind i almost have to turn the fans and the water pump off on this car to get it to warm up so it just runs at operating temperature now, I don't have any bias on fan brands. Um, my advice to you would just be buy a quality brand that you know is not a pile of crap fan. Um, buy one that has the CFM ratings correct and buy one that fits on, with a shroud on your radiator. Uh, I really don't care what brand you buy. And in fact, we use a lot of different ones. Another one that works really well, I did a twin turbo Coyote car last winter and we use, it's a black magic brand. Uh, it's a black magic flex light fan and that one moved a lot of air as well that's a single fan it wasn't quite up to 4000 cfm i can't remember the exact number on it but it worked really well and again depending on how much open space you have in the front of your car will dictate a little bit on fans uh, especially if it's a street car and you drive around a lot but if you pull up to a stoplight and you and it's 110 degrees out and you don't have a super solid fan combo with shrouding and everything um, you may suffer it may be fine going down the road that's why i always like to try and max out what uh, i can run on my setups uh, just from the get-go i would always rather have too much than not enough you can always turn a fan on and off or put it on your efi system to be triggered on and off at certain times and temperatures uh, unfortunately, if you don't have it, it's a lot harder to uh, make adjustments as you go. Wiring. The last thing I'll talk about is wiring. So, just because your fan has two wires coming out of it, power and ground, doesn't mean you just hook that up uh, to your fuse panel or switch panel to power and ground. Most of these fans just pull tremendous amounts of amperage, especially on initial startup. and it's a good way to burn your car down to uh, hook that up direct. Even worse if you don't have a fused uh, spot for it. And that's another misconception. Um, this is probably, along with your fuel pump, the thing that pulls the most amperage on a car. So what you wanna do is get a good uh, relay set up. Some of these fans call for 50 amps at startup. Make sure your 
uh, relay setup matches what the max draw and amperage for your fan is and use a big enough wire. You can't run two little wires straight from your switch panel to this and expect it to work. In fact, you might burn your car down like that. I've seen wiring catch on fire, melt. Of course, that's terrible if you're out on the road or on drag week or at the track, it's not fun. So make sure you use a proper relay setup. Make sure you have shrouding and make sure you have proper CFM flow, 3,500 to 4,000. You pair that with the radiator posts that we made the other day, which can be found on YouTube or Facebook, and you're gonna have a super solid base for a cooling system. Now our next episode, we'll talk about water pumps, the ins and outs of them, and what we use. And those three things are gonna make you have a cooling system that makes you happy to drive your car, happy to race it, even on the hottest of days. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Motion 360. Stay tuned, there's more to come.